Outsourcing can be an ominous sounding word. Outsourcing. So can technology. Technology. Especially if these words come to be associated with people losing their jobs. The Future of Jobs Report 2020 by the World Economic Forum suggested that by 2025, 85 million jobs could be shifted over to machines, but in exchange, 97 million new jobs might be created. Even if more jobs enter the economy overall, a labor force change of that magnitude can be disconcerting. Navigating that changing landscape requires new ideas, new systems, and new companies. This brings me to another word that can be frightening, outsiders. If people are on the outside of a system, maybe they've been put there for a justifiable reason, right? As any underdog story will tell you, that assumption is far from reality. Our journey as outsiders is similar to that of our employees, right? We are able to authentically connect because we weren't able to really raise any venture capital funding. We struggled for years. We stayed with our employees. We didn't have the money to throw big fancy parties and have really nice offices. Instead, we bought a bunch of beer and played guitars with our employees for our first Christmas party. And our office space originally was at my parents' house and then was like a very rundown $800 a month office at Santa Monica Airport. In this industry, if you're trying to connect with people that the world has forgotten and left behind, it helps to come at it as an outsider. That's Bryce Maddock, co-founder and CEO of Task Us, an outsourcing company that has had a winding path from living on the outside of the tech and investment circles to having an international reach, more than 30,000 employees, and using an ideal blend of tech and humanity to serve customers all over the world. Find out next on Business X Factors just how this company that started out as an underdog became successful and how its outside perspective offers hidden advantages. I'm Jeremy Bergeron, head of strategy at mission.org. Welcome to Business X Factors. Each week, we'll take a look at the secret sauce that takes companies to the highest levels of success and then unpack how they got there. We'll explore how these organizations are run and then what's really so special about the people, the culture, the processes that make it all happen. Question for you. What do you think is the best use of technology? Our friends at Highland believe technology is about transforming the way we all work so we can be more informed, empowered, and connected through every interaction and in every relationship with everyone we serve. Highland is your X factor for better performance. Go to highland.com forward slash insights to learn more. That's H-Y-L-A-N-D.com slash insights. If sculpting your child into a successful entrepreneur was all about providing the ideal blend of guidance, Bryce's parents may have covered that aspect of parenting perfectly. My dad is a writer and my mom is a physical therapist. And so I always say that my dad taught me how to dream and my mom taught me how to make it happen. My dad, early on, he was always sort of saying, don't just go get a normal job. You want to figure out what you love and then figure out how to make money doing it. And my mom is much more anxious, much more. We got to get you to graduate from college. You need to have a fallback career just in case everything goes wrong. She's so tough. She, she's going on 70 years old and she still is going into patients' homes, works just constantly. And so she cultivated in me a work ethic. The combination, I think, of having big aspirations, which came from my dad, with the put your head down and grind mentality that came from my mom, I think ultimately is what led to my own success. For Bryce, success came from partnering up with longtime friend Jasper Weir to co-found Task Us. It took some time to get the Task Us party going, but the business grew out of their ability to get parties started in their personal lives. 
we went to high school together, Santa Monica High School. We were like, I would say pretty middling in everything that we did. You know, we were like, eh, okay, at school enough to get into college. We were popular-ish, but not the most popular kids. We were very competitive, which is good, but not good if you're not really that good at anything. And so ultimately, what we figured out was we could organize people. And for us, that meant throwing parties. And we throw some parties in high school, we would organize these events. And then after we graduated, Jasper and I went and backpacked in Europe for six weeks. And we kept going to these nightclubs in Europe and realizing that there were kids who were 18, 17, 16 in these nightclubs. And we're like, God, this is such a cool experience. It'd be amazing if we had this in, in high school. So we went back determined that after our freshman year in college, we would throw nightclubs for high school kids. And turned out that there were things that you know were loosely called nightclubs in Hollywood that also had a license to serve food. If you had a license to serve food, you could let in people who were under age as long as you didn't serve alcohol. And most of these places were closed on Monday nights, but kids didn't have school during the week, during the summer. So Monday night was our night. And we threw, I think every summer was like 10 Monday nights. We would line up a, a series of events. We'd have a DJ, 800 to 1,000 kids would show up and line up and pay $15 to get in. We created a VIP line where you could pay $25 to cut the line. It was a great formative entrepreneurial experience. Their nightclub called Club Access, which is an epic name, by the way, helped Bryce and Jasper hone skills that they later applied to task us. There's so many lessons that came from that experience, getting teams of people to work together. And in a nightclub, there's not that many people but you have your door people who are taking money. In many cases, that was our moms because they're the only people that we could trust. You have your DJ who's showing up and playing music and providing the entertainment. And then the club would provide security. And for a high school nightclub, we needed a lot of security. And so getting the security to make sure that the club was safe and that kids were behaving themselves, but not infringe too much on the fun was also something that was interesting. So there was definitely a through line that came from just putting people together. The other side, though, was marketing, right? I mean, huge effort underway to go out and acquire customers, to get kids excited, to believe in something that didn't exist. We printed flyers, we printed t-shirts, we put together promotional teams and incentivized people with free entry for them and their friends if they would bring people. And I think a lot of that go-to-market strategy has been mimicked at Taskus. Now, that was a consumer play. Taskus is a business-to-business -business play. But we put together a series of dinners for entrepreneurs that we ran for the first five, six years of Taskus. And essentially, it was like group therapy for struggling entrepreneurs. We would get a sponsor, a law firm, an accounting firm to pay for dinner. We would invite a bunch of entrepreneurs together to share openly about their challenges rather than just brag about exactly what was going right in their business. And that put us in a great position to get to know oh, this person's having a tough time scaling their operations. This person's having a tough time answering their customer service phone calls. And then we could position Task Us to be the solution for those people. So really cultivating a community of, of people and, and then turning that into commercial success, I think was the commonality between Club Access and Task Us. Although Task Us has ultimately benefited from Bryce's and Jasper's business acumen that they gained along their entrepreneurial journey, it's fair to say that Tasca's was not greatly valued by investors early on. The unique part of our journey, when you compare it to a lot of the fast-growing technology companies that we frankly support, is no one would invest in us. In 2008, we had this idea. Originally, we were going to be a virtual assistant company, helping busy professionals to outsource a task at a time. And we built a very basic website with the $20,000 that we had our communal life savings and hired people working from home around the world to support the tasks that were coming in. It's embarrassing to say, but we kind of knew what venture capital was. We were learning a lot about this because we had just graduated from college and we were loosely affiliated with the tech community in Los Angeles. And the people that we talked to, the angel investors and the venture capitalists that we eventually went on to talk to, all wanted us to be much more of a technology company. We were hiring people to do work at the end of the day. And we didn't really know how to do that, candidly. I mean, I'm not a technologist. Jasper, my co-founder, is not a technologist. And so for the first seven years of the business, we only had that initial $20,000 investment. 
Find out after the break how being on the outside of the venture capital system and having only the $20,000 investment for years ended up being a strategic advantage that propelled Task Us to where it is today. When I need help, I want someone who understands where I am now and where I'm coming from, but with a broader perspective. The folks at Highland are like that. Highland is a true partner to more than half of Fortune 100 companies, a partner that understands your industry and offers expertly tailored solutions that evolve with you. With Highland, you gain a complete view of information across your organization, along with the agility to compete at the top of your game and deliver better customer experiences. Highland is your X factor for better performance. Go to highland.com forward slash insights to learn more. That's H-Y-L-A-N-D dot com slash insights. For the first seven years, Taskus only had $20,000 to get off the ground. And before the break, I told you that was a good thing. If you're wondering how, so was I. In business, it is often said that cash is king, but really equity is king. And thanks to their underdog position, Task Us was able to build a kingdom. It meant that seven years in, we still owned 100% of the equity. It meant that we had to be cash flow positive, basically more or less from day one. It enforced an incredible amount of discipline on the business. And so I think sometimes... In the moment, you feel like this is awful. All of my friends are raising million dollars, $2 million, $10 million. They get to pay themselves a salary. They can take a girl out to dinner with that salary. But in retrospect, I'm so glad because the business was much more disciplined as a result. We ended up owning a lot more of the business as a result. And so I think sometimes your greatest challenges or even weaknesses can become your greatest strengths with the benefit of hindsight. And throughout the difficult early stages, the dynamic between Bryce and Jasper helped keep Taskus afloat. When we started the business, we didn't make any money. I mean, no money. We didn't pay ourselves a salary. We, I think the first year in business, we made like $170,000. Most of that money actually came from doing social media consulting. We started this side company called Smarter Social Media because it was the only thing that people would really pay us for. There were some really dark days. I tend to be more of a pessimist. Sometimes I call myself a realist. Jasper is much more of the optimist. And there are moments when, without question, I would have thrown in the towel had I not been able to rely on Jasper's positivity. Even though the social media consulting company was not the end goal, Bryce and Jasper's decision to use it as a moneymaker kept the dream alive. Remember, the initial idea of Task Us was to help individual people outsource their personal tasks. And they had started to build the infrastructure for that in the Philippines. When this idea didn't take off as planned, Bryce and Jasper were open-minded to pivot the business model. We went to our friends who had successful startups and all of them were facing the same problem. They couldn't hire people fast enough to keep up with their scale, particularly in entry-level positions, customer support, data entry and sales. In the case of social media companies, there was this emerging realm of content moderation. And so we realized that we had the answer to their problem in the team of people that we had started to build in the Philippines. And we started scaling that team in essentially what was an outsourcing model. Now, we didn't want to call it outsourcing. In in the beginning, we said, oh, we're like remote workforce solutions, scalable workforce solutions. But whenever we explained the business to people, they would say, oh, you're an outsourcing company. And so a few years in, we decided to just embrace that and came up with a tagline, ridiculous and good outsourcing as a way to just say, yep, that's exactly what we are. We're hyper-focused on high growth technology businesses and on scaling the teams to support their growth. This pivot led to Taskus' own growth and allowed Bryce and Jasper to dial in on this winning version of Taskus. We closed our social media consultancy we closed our task-based virtual assistant company probably two or three years into the business. So this is like 2010, 2011. And we started focusing exclusively on startups. Not focus, 
being maniacal now about this is who we service. Anyone who's a Series A stage startup that's scaling a team needs task us. I think that then led to exponential success. And then came a break during 2013 when Taskus landed what would end up being a huge customer. And this opportunity came from a familiar theme for Bryce and Taskus, participating in a communal experience. We were in LA, part of this startup community, had lots of friends who were building technology companies, Series A, Series B companies, all of them were raising venture capital. We were not able to raise venture capital, but we said, hey, any of the dirty work that you need done, we'll get it done for you at scale. And as part of that community, there was a guy who became one of my closest friends who became Uber's first GM in Los Angeles and went on to run the West Coast for Uber. And so he opened the door to us supporting him. Now, interestingly, in the early days, Uber was like, we're never going to outsource customer support. We're going to do all this in-house. We like to joke that there are five stages of outsourcing acceptance. And that's always the first stage when we start with a small company is, no, no, we're different. We're going to do this all in-house. We're never going to outsource anything. But my friend who was their GM thought that was not a wise strategy. And so he actually snuck us in the back door. They were very supply constrained in the early days, trying to onboard riders and drivers as quickly as possible. And then they decided they were going to begin to outsource support and we were right time, right place. And it was bananas. It was, can you hire us 50 people? Okay. Can you hire us 50 people next week? How about 50 people next week? Bryce and Jasper have come a long way from hosting high school parties to earning the trust of companies of Uber's ilk. Today, new clients are a combination of these Series A, Series B, high growth technology companies that are scaling up and then winning big contracts from the biggest technology companies in the world who are looking for a more agile partner to support their needs. Bryce and Jasper have gone from industry outsiders to insiders. But what is it at the very foundation of their relationship that set them up to do well, even when a typical mindset might suggest that the odds against them were particularly high? Really open, transparent, vulnerable communication is like the foundation of what makes this all possible. When we were doing that backpacking trip in Europe, we didn't argue once for six weeks. And it was because even at 17 at the time, we were able to talk openly about what we wanted, what we feared how we were feeling under the surface, there's always so much going on. There's so much emotion, there's envy, there's jealousy, there's insecurity. And actually in our society, we don't feel very comfortable talking openly about that, but finding a partner, whether that's a business partner or a life partner, or just a friend who you can share that with openly makes all the difference in the world. That ability to communicate so effectively comes from a humble place. To be able to see each other and respect each other on a human level, And it's that appreciation for each other that has trickled into how they value the rest of the Taskus team. One of the things we did when we built the Taskus website was recognize that the way in which we communicate through every decision on that website is a embodiment of of our brand and what we stand for. And so most companies put the most senior people at the top of their people page. What we decided was to just basically have them appear at random you will see people who are managers and directors and VPs from all different parts of the world. And occasionally you'll see a C-level employee, but sometimes you won't. And the goal there is to give people a true representation of who is actually making this happen. At the end of the day, the work that I do makes no money at all. It's the frontline teammates who are delivering products and services to our customers that are paying for my salary. So we want to make sure that people get to see their faces. The decision to have a fluid hierarchy of task us workers on their website is more than an aesthetic choice to portray benevolent company values. It is a reflection of task us values that are put into actions. Bryce and Jasper were initially passed over by insiders in part because their value was not really seen. This experience gave them a special edge. They are able to identify talent who, like themselves, might have been overlooked. The most important thing in our business is attracting or retaining talented individuals. And sometimes that can mean discovering talent where people didn't think it existed. And so we go into countries that aren't the wealthiest 
countries in the world aren't necessarily the bastions of innovation. We don't have a lot of employees working in places like Silicon Valley. Our employees are working in the Philippines or in India or in Eastern Europe. And these are incredibly talented individuals that the world has left behind in many ways. And we're able to go in and say, hey, you've got an opportunity to work for the most innovative, fast-growing technology companies in the world and really make a difference. That's a great pitch because it's sincere and it's backed up with actions. For Taskus, creating this sort of culture of communication is about getting up close and personal with their employees to relay that they are valued by the company. The key is to do things that don't scale first. We went to the Philippines. We lived with our employees. We got to know every one of our first 100 employees on a first name basis. We threw the most epic Christmas parties. The Philippines loves Christmas parties. And so we threw the most epic Christmas parties where Jasper and I were partying with our employees to all hours of the night. That is arguably not a very scalable strategy, but what it got us was loyalty and devotion. These are incredibly talented people who could have gone and work at any traditional outsourcing company, probably made more money, for sure had a more secure job, but they took a chance on us because what they saw was we were completely bought in, completely dedicated to the business. Once a culture is established, then the tough part is sustaining it as the company scales. An area of focus for Taskus is training up their leaders to share Taskus values. We train all of our leaders and require everybody who is a VP and above at Taskus to work at least one day with a frontline teammate every single year. We, in the middle of the pandemic, have shifted from doing in-person focus groups in the past, when we had everybody in the office, we'd travel the world constantly. We'd sit down one-to-one -one with teammates. We'd sit down in groups with teammates to understand what was happening in the business. Obviously, now 90% of our employees are working from home, and so it's not as effective to do that. But what we've done is we've virtualized that as much as possible. And today, we've got a thing called Connect15, which is a platform that pairs our leaders with frontline teammates for 15-minute conversations about anything that doesn't have to do with work. Wait. You can't talk about work? I love this idea. Let's start something like this at Mission. They're incredible conversations. I'm talking to people in India and Greece and Colombia and the Philippines. Some of these people are working in the middle of the night. Some of these people are telling you about a side projects that they've got that they're super excited about. You hear their fears and their excitements, and, and that keeps us connected to the business. And then just trying as much as possible to pass that responsibility on to every layer of leadership so that your direct reports are acting in accordance with your core values. Their direct reports are doing the same, and that works its way all the way down to the front line of the business. Task Us is a talent and technology business, which puts it in a unique position concerning technological acceleration and the subsequent disruptions in the labor force. So even though, as I mentioned earlier, the World Economic Forum predicted that potentially 85 million jobs might shift to machines. It's a change that Bryce and his team are prepared for. We're trying to make the world a more efficient place with the incredible talented individuals that we've got. And if we're successful at our job, the jobs we're doing today are going to be done by machines in a year's time. But we'll take those same individuals upskill them and move them on to the jobs of tomorrow. And that's just a constant iterative process that we've been going through for the last 13 years. Task Us, via the leadership of Bryce and Jasper, is about seeing people's worth and communicating to them that they are valuable. Clearly, Task Us also cares about upskilling employees too, as the company's own tech disrupts its labor. That kind of conundrum leads back to a baseline value at Task Us asking hard questions, and then doing something to be part of a constructive solution. Back in 2012, as their business began to ramp up, Bryce and Jasper took a hard look in the mirror. Jasper and I sat down and said, what can we do to give back? And, and the, the question that we asked ourselves was, what is the thing we've taken advantage of? What have we exploited for our own gain? And then how can we reinvest in that? And the answer was simple. We take advantage of the incredible education of the people of the Philippines, these incredibly talented individuals who form the foundation of what Taskus has become today. And so we said the best thing we could do is invest in the next generation and make sure that 
the children of our employees are getting that same world-class education, perhaps even a better education so that they can do the jobs of tomorrow. And so we started the Taskus Foundation and the Taskus Scholars Program. That first year, we paid for the private education of three kids of our employees in the Philippines. Last year, we paid for over 750 of the kids of our employees in the Philippines to go to great private schools. And my hope is that those kids are getting an opportunity to get an incredible education and that they'll then take on the jobs of tomorrow and pay it forward to their communities. Being on the outside of a system can have hidden advantages. For Bryce and Jasper, they know what it's like to not quite fit in, but they also developed a work ethic to push through that adversity and an entrepreneurial spirit to work toward their dream while making adjustments as needed. Their values are poured into the very foundation of Taskus. Early on in their friendship, they discovered the power of communicating to help feel more connected. Now, Taskus embodies a culture of finding talented people who might sometimes be otherwise overlooked, drawing them into the community, and then finding new and exciting ways to show them that they are valued. Bryce and Jasper have taken their party and grown it to the point that the party never stops and everyone is invited. Underdogs, popular kids, startups, legacy companies, and everyone in between. I don't know about you, but when I have a decision to make, I look for information. I may look through emails, documents, photos, and files in multiple places. And if I'm lucky, I find what I'm looking for. So it's amazing to me that while I have trouble finding a single file, some organizations success hinges on making sure that the right people can get all the right information they need when and where they need it. Like hospitals, insurers, banks, and all sorts of businesses. I don't know how they do it, but our friends at Highland do. Highland empowers more than half of 2020 Fortune 100 companies with tools that help make sure the right information gets to the right folks easily and automatically and makes business processes smarter and more efficient. Highland is your X factor for better performance. Go to highland.com forward slash insights to learn more. That's H-Y-L-A-N-D dot com slash insights. You've been listening to Business X Factors, created by our team at mission.org and brought to you by our friends at Highland. Are you enjoying this show? If so, I and the whole team here would be so grateful if you took a minute and rated and reviewed us on Apple Podcasts, as this really helps ensure that more listeners like you find the show. And also it lets me know how I'm doing. Please be kind. (laughs) If you enjoyed this episode and want to dive deeper into the topics discussed, be sure to check out the resources section of our show notes where we've included helpful links, articles, and books, including any stat or stories referenced in this episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'm your host, Jeremy Bergeron, and I'll catch you next time on Business X Factor.